So welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about vitamin B12 and how vitamin B12 supports mental health. And if you recall in the last video that I did on labs for mental health, Assessing for vitamin B12 deficiency is one of the markers that I check. And in this video, you're gonna understand exactly why. So let's get into it. So let's start with what is vitamin B12? Well, vitamin B12 is a water-soluble vitamin and it's synthesized by bacteria and only found in animal-derived products or sources. And this includes things like meat, eggs, and dairy products. So no plant-derived products. And that is why vegetarians and vegans have to supplement for vitamin B12 outside of their diet. And so why is B12 important for mental health? Well, because it has many functions in the brain. In fact, Vitamin B12 enhances the communication process in our brains. It is also necessary for methylation, and this is required for all cell survival. B12 is also necessary for DNA synthesis, for myelin production, or the sheath that's covering the axons of your neurons or your nerve cells, as well as cellular communication, and it's also important for the production of neurotransmitters. In fact, B12 is a cofactor of both serotonin and dopamine synthesis. It also supports the regeneration of our nerves after an injury. It's also important for energy production and also supports our gastrointestinal mucosa. So supporting that gut brain access or gut brain connection. So now you can see why it's very important for our mental health. And so therefore a B12 deficiency can actually impact our mental health very greatly. And in fact, the prevalence of subclinical vitamin B12 deficiency is estimated to be anywhere between 20 and 25%. And this subclinical B12 deficiency is actually attributed to a lot of neuropsychiatric conditions. And in fact, neuropsychiatric abnormalities are reported to be present in up to 28% of patients who have a subclinical B12 deficiency without even showing the deficiency in your red blood cells. So without contributing to B12 anemia and having those deficiencies seen in the red blood cell counts, the hematocrit, the hemoglobin, or even the uh, mean corpuscular volume or MCV. And that's why I check B12 along with the RBC, the CBC with diff, etc. like I explained in the video on labs for mental health. And now let's talk about some causes and risk factors for vitamin B12 deficiency. So if you have any of these risk factors, you're gonna be a higher risk for vitamin B12 deficiency and even this subclinical deficiency. So things like I mentioned earlier, the vegetarian and vegan diets um, will definitely need to supplement with vitamin B12 or get vitamin B12 in other sources or fortify foods. Um, weight loss surgery patients, so gastric bypass surgeries and things like that. Um, celiacs and Crohn's disease uh, create malabsorption of B12, so uh, those patients are more at risk. And there are also medications that can actually cause a subclinical or even significant B12 deficiencies. And these medications include things like uh, the PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. So your medications like Pepsid and Prilosec that you can get over the counter, they can actually affect absorption of B12 and other vitamins and minerals. But also medications such as metformin that's used for diabetes can also impact your absorption of vitamin B12. And even the birth control pill. So the oral birth control pill has been associated with vitamin deficiencies and particularly B vitamins and B12. Also alcohol use disorder or even alcohol abuse can affect um, absorption of nutrients, including B12. Um, the elderly population are more at risk for vitamin B12 deficiency as well as other minerals and vitamin deficiencies. And then there are autoimmune conditions that make you more prone to vitamin B12 deficiency. Things like pernicious anemia or having low intrinsic factor, which is the protein in your stomach that can actually help to absorb vitamin B12. So when you're low in intrinsic factor, you can actually have this pernicious anemia or other types of autoimmune um, conditions that impact low intrinsic factor. And so the important thing here is to make sure that if you have any of these risk factors that you're definitely checking your vitamin B12 level. And also if you have any of these risk factors and are experiencing mental health symptoms, your root cause can actually be a vitamin B12 deficiency. And so 
The other thing I want to mention here is that signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency will often manifest as mental illness. And often these mental illness or mental health symptoms are actually seen before it's a severe clinical deficiency. That's why it's important for all psychiatric providers to be assessing for this deficiency. And so some of the psychiatric diagnoses that have been associated with low vitamin B12 include things like anxiety with symptoms such as agitation, irritability, rapid heartbeat, palpitations, and even insomnia. Depression is also a condition because you can have symptoms of low mood, apathy, fatigue, and even loss of appetite, which can be attributed to low vitamin B12. And even ADHD, with lack of concentration, lack of focus, agitation, and restlessness. And then with more severe B12 deficiency, you can have symptoms of schizophrenia and even bipolar disorder. And this could look like having delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized thought processes. And low vitamin B12 can also be one of the factors attributing to Alzheimer's disease as loss of memory and loss of concentration can be a symptom of low vitamin B12 deficiency. And so when I'm talking about vitamin B12 deficiency, it's important that you understand the B12 levels that are considered normal and abnormal. With standard lab values in the US, you're gonna get anywhere from 200 to 1100 PGs per ml. And that's in the US, and that's what's considered standard normal vitamin B12 levels. Now this may be different if you live in another country. However, what I wanna emphasize here is that optimal B12 levels are actually between 545 and 1100 PGs per ml. And that's where you wanna be for optimal health and optimal mental health. When you're below 200, you're actually in that severe clinical B12 deficiency, where you will most likely start to see problems with your hemoglobin hematocrit and the B12 deficiency anemia. However, like I said, mental health symptoms can actually come before that occurs. And so that's where you wanna catch it. So having between 200 to 350 is considered a moderate deficiency of B12. And then a level from 351 to 449 is actually seen as that subclinical or beginning stages of a vitamin B12 deficiency. So if you're below 500 in any of these stages, it would be advisable for you to speak with your provider about supplementing with vitamin B12. And so what does that supplementation look like? So when we're treating a vitamin B12 deficiency, the supplementation is going to vary based on your lab values. So it's gonna be individual for each person. It's also gonna depend on your symptoms. So if you're below that 500 range and you're having significant symptoms, especially with depression or anxiety, your supplementation regimen may be more aggressive than someone who's in that same category but having minimal symptoms of B12 deficiency. And obviously if you're in that clinical severe deficiency, state below 200, you definitely want to go more aggressive with your B12 supplementation. So what exactly does aggressive supplementation look like? Well, for aggressive supplementation, you want to be delivering your vitamin B12 intramuscularly. And this is going to be in doses of 1,000 to 2,000 micrograms every two to three days for two to four weeks. Then you would switch to sublingual dosing of vitamin B12. Now, some providers will use subcutaneous injection of vitamin B12, and that's just up to the provider, but most will use the intramuscular injection form. It's more readily absorbed that way, and the results are gonna be more pronounced. Moderate deficiencies can be treated with sublingual vitamin B12, and you wanna do sublingual versus just oral swallowing a pill because sublingual absorption helps bypass the stomach. If someone's having issues with absorption in their stomach, it'll be more readily absorbed sublingually or under the tongue. So if you have a moderate deficiency of vitamin B12, we're looking at 1,000 to 5,000 micrograms being given sublingually for at least three months. So for a mild or maintenance dose of vitamin B12, you're looking at 500 micrograms to 1,000 micrograms taken sublingually. And some patients for maintenance only can switch to oral formulation if we were able to correct any of the gastric problems that were inhibiting the absorption of the B12. And so now what about dietary sources? So it's gonna be hard if you're very deficient to get your vitamin B12 
12 from dietary sources because you're gonna be have to be very intentional about eating foods that contain a lot of vitamin B12. So when you're in that severe state of clinical deficiency, you wanna make sure you're supplementing, getting to at least a normal level, and then you can use diet to maintain your vitamin B12 level. And so all of these foods here on this chart are foods that are high in vitamin B12. So you'll see most of them are animal products because that's where it's naturally derived from. But you'll also see foods that are fortified with vitamin B12, such as cereals. And so if you're a vegan or vegetarian, that may be your best option for B12. And also nutritional yeast can be fortified um, with B12 or have a lot of B12 in it. Um, and so that could also be something you can use instead of um, animal products. But for most vegetarians and vegans, um, they are going to be supplementing with vitamin B12 to get the recommended vitamin B12 levels. So there you have it. That is my overview on vitamin B12 and mental health. And now you can see the importance of vitamin B12 for supporting your mental health. So please advocate for yourself and speak with your provider about making sure that you get your vitamin and B12 level checked. So that way you can help improve your mental health symptoms. Especially if you've been labeled treatment resistant, it's going to be very important that you dig a little deeper and make sure that root causes of your mental health symptoms have been ruled out. And that's what I talked about in the video on labs for mental health. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch it. So that way you can get an idea of what labs to ask your provider to run for you. So that way you can rule out those things. Now, I also have labs for mental health available for those of you who live in the United States. So if you don't have a provider that's um, willing or able to order these labs, you can go ahead and go to my website. I will make sure to put the link down in the description and you can go ahead and order one of those packages that best suits your needs. And lastly, what I'd like to mention is that we now have a membership program. And within this membership program, if you have questions, comments, concerns, your comments are going to be um, elevated as a priority. And so I'll make sure to answer member comments first. Also, I'm going to be having live Zoom sessions to have interactions with the members. Once we get up to 10 members, then we'll actually have some live Zoom sessions so you'll have more interaction with me so I can support you along this mental health care journey because I know it can be very difficult to navigate all of these different things. So that wraps up the video. If you have any experience with vitamin B12 and mental health symptoms or mental illness, please drop it down in the comment section below because we all learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care. Oh wait, sorry. Sorry, back up, it's B12. B12, B12 is also B12 is also necessary for B12 is also necessary for DNA synthesis. I shouldn't say that. Hold on. Which is the protein in your stomach that that is oh, sorry. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Here we go. And up to 28% Hold on.